Hello, IB Physics, Ms. Getz here. We are going to start our last lab for Unit 1. Um, and this lab is called the Paragraph Experiment. And just like the other two labs that we've looked at, our whole goal is to use measurements to look for quantitative patterns. Quantitative is a word that means numbers. So we're looking for patterns with numbers. Uh, and so far, we've done that with the Pendulum Lab, looking at how the swing of the pendulum, its period, is actually unaffected by the angle we release it at. And we've looked at our rubber band lab, looking at how the stretch of the rubber band um, is affected by the mass that is hung from that rubber band. So we're going to be investigating for this lab a paragraph. Um, and so to start off with, I'd like you to just make a little wild guess. If I have a paragraph that is 33.5 centimeters long, that's, that's this long, it's like longer than a normal piece of paper. Um, how wide, how uh, tall, what will the height be of that paragraph? So predict the height of a paragraph that is 33.5 centimeters wide, just like randomly in your head right now. And you might be saying, Ms. Yats, how on earth am I supposed to be able to do this without any context? And you're right. So let's figure out what that paragraph is going to be. Uh, and that is this paragraph right here. Uh, it says, science is finding patterns in nature and then using those patterns to accurately predict the future. For instance, one pattern in nature that nearly everyone has discovered is that objects on Earth, when unsupported, fall. We have named this pattern gravity, and we can predict that tomorrow, if you were to hold up a marker and then let it go, that marker would fall to the floor. You knew that, I bet. Still true tomorrow and the next day. Uh, now, scientists and engineers have discovered that many patterns reading is hard, have discovered many patterns and have gone as far as creating a device from materials found in the Earth's crust that if tomorrow you touch in a certain way and then walk, talk towards it, again, reading, not my strong suit, uh, and then talk towards it, a loved one can hear your voice miles away. We, of course, call this cell phone. Yeah, cell phones. Um, so this is a paragraph sort of summing up big idea of science that we're using patterns to predict stuff and then we can use that to manipulate the world around us. So that's the, pat the paragraph that we'll be conducting this lab around. So right now I'd like you to find your lab notebook in your binder. You'll also need your binder, so keep that out as well. Um, and on the next blank page, go ahead and label it paragraph lab and add our research question, which is how does the width of a paragraph affect the resulting height. So that's what we want to find out. And throughout this video, of course, you can pause, obviously, to write stuff down in your lab notebook, because I'm just going to move forward, assuming that you know how to press the pause button, because you do. You're quite smart. You've got this. Um, so what we want to do with our paragraph experiment to start off with is we're going to make a hypothesis. I'd like that hypothesis to be in two forms. I'd like a sketch form, and a in your own words form. So sketch, you might have a little x and y axis. Uh, on the x axis, we'll have the width. So as the width gets larger, what will happen to the height of the paragraph? Height will go on the y axis. Um, you will, so you'll sketch whatever you think it's gonna look like. And then also add like a little bit of a hypothesis in words. So I think the height depends on the width in a blank relationship. So you might fill in a mathematical relationship word here. You also might say, I don't really know what like my drawing would be in a math relationship you can describe it in words like that it will go down that it will go up that it will go down then up or whatever um so take a moment to do that then we want to start setting up our lab so in your lab notebook you want to take a moment to record a few things so decide what our independent variable is list it I'm going to let you decide that from our research question and from our thing that we're investigating. The other variable then would be your dependent variable. And then for control variables, you might say, ah, Ms. Getz, there's some things that I, I think might be control variables that you're not quite sure of. So I'm going to actually show you what our data looks like. And I'm going to switch views so that I can show it to you a little bit more clearly. So in your uh, IB Physics binder, in tab one, that's for unit one, which is all about patterns, uh, I'd like you to find 1.3. So 1.2 is a waiver. I should really make an assignment for and have you turn in. 
I have no idea. Anyway, we'll talk about that later. Um, but you want to find this like purpley, orangey, it's not orange. Wow. Yep. Distance learning, guys. Really helps your brain, doesn't it? This purple colored paper, um, and this is actually where all of your data is going to come from. So you're going to want to take that on out. Um, I'm going to close it up so I don't have everything else spilling out everywhere. And you can notice a few things on this on this paper. I'm going to give you a, a given right now, and that is your control variables are listed at the top of your paper right here. So for me, I have uh, the font Algerian, a 10-point font size, because you can imagine, like, if you used a 200-point font size, probably it would be, like, a taller paragraph. That would, that would make sense. Um, and mine is single spaced. So this is what you're going to want to write down for your control variables. Um, and this is where you're going to be getting all of your data for this lab. So now that you've written down your independent variable, your dependent variable, and these control variables from the paper, um, we're going to go ahead and move forward and think about how you're going to collect your data for this lab. So those are going to be our procedures. And you're going to want to jot down some notes about these in your lab notebook. You don't need to have it be hyper detailed. You don't need to explain how to use a meter stick or how to like measure a length. That would be silly and unnecessary. But you do want a little bit of detail about like how you collected your data. Um, so those are your experimental setup and steps. So you might say something about like, well, I'm going to measure the, the width of each paragraph and then I'm going to measure the height of each paragraph. Um, you're going to want to comment on your independent variable. What's the biggest range of data you can get? And so you might notice that the width of your paragraph is actually limited by the width of this piece of paper. That's what's limiting our independent variable data. And then our dependent variable data, you want to make sure to take enough data to get a good feel for the random error present in your experimental setup. And you know what? You're actually not even going to have to worry too much about that because measuring the length of a paragraph on a piece of paper is pretty easy. So I'm actually going to say that we can have just one trial um, to kind of speed up your, your life and your measurement time um, because there's not going to be a lot of variability on this given our experimental setup is this stationary piece of paper. So take a moment right now, just jot down how are you going to measure. Maybe it'll be two or three sentences. Maybe it'll be a list, two or three, four bullet points long. I don't know, really quick, jot it down. And then we're going to add in this very important thing to your lab notebook that we haven't added in yet. And that's about your measurement uncertainty. So I'd like you to take a moment to think about what measurement tool are you going to use to measure the width and height of these various paragraphs? Hmm. And then conveniently, you'll probably use the same measurement tool for both the width and the height. So you only have to write this down once, but in general, when we're doing a lab, you're going to need to justify the measurement uncertainty for both the independent variable and the dependent variable. So here in this lab, you can write something about uh, the measurement uncertainty when I'm measuring length and width using whatever measurement tool you want to use. Maybe you want to use this paper ruler. Maybe you want to use a physical ruler. Maybe you have yet a different kind of physical ruler. There's just like lots of options. Um, but describe what are you using to measure and therefore what is your measurement uncertainty. So then we're going to start collecting our data. Um, and normally I would have you set up a data table with multiple trials for your dependent variable. But because of the nature of this experiment, there is not going to be a lot of random error. It is really very straightforward to measure the width and length of something that is on a piece of paper stationary in front of you. Um, so our data table is going to look a little bit simpler. Um, you only need three columns. Pretty easy. We have five different paragraphs. I actually have those paragraphs labeled on your purple sheet of paper, just so that if you are comparing data with someone else in class, you're talking about the same paragraphs. Um, and then our independent variables are width. That's the thing we're changing. Um, it's measured in centimeters, plus or minus. Oh my gosh, I didn't use the hotkey. What? So remember, it's command. No, it's option shift equals. Yeah, see, I remembered. 
Um, so option shift equals looks much nicer. Um, so that's where you'll write your measurement uncertainty. This again, you are determining from the measurement tool you are using, whatever that measurement tool is. And keep in mind when you're determining the measurement uncertainty, uh, it's going to be the larger of either the limit of the instrument for each measurement taken or an estimate of uh, measurement procedure challenges, a, a larger estimate of measurement procedure challenges. So you might say, oh, I have some additional measurement procedure difficulties because some of my paragraphs have a little like, there's that little space at the end. Do I count that in the width? How do I count for it? Do I count that in the, the height of the paragraph? So you might have some something larger than just the measurement uncertainty of the tool, but make sure you have clearly described why for both the width and the height if they are different. Um, additionally, my control variables are not going to necessarily be the same as yours, so make sure to write down your control variables at the top of your data table. And then go ahead and collect your data. Whew. So hopefully that data collection process went pretty quickly for you. Um, and now you're going to be graphing your data on Desmos like we have done in class before. Um, it's linked in this assignment page on Schoology, so you should be able to just click on that link. Make sure you sign into Desmos, otherwise it doesn't save your graph. And then you get crabby if you have to come back to it, which you will. So make sure you sign into Desmos so that you can save your graph. Um, you need to have air boxes. I have already set up the all the Desmos stuff for it, so you'll just will use the slider to determine exactly how much measurement uncertainty you decided you had and make that be the case on your graph as well. Um, and then when you're deciding the pattern, whether it is proportional, linear, inverse, or quadratic, the relationship between width and height, um, make sure to unclick any of the patterns that don't fit your data. Or you can even delete them it doesn't exactly matter either way. I will continue to give you templates for our labs on Desmos. So you'll set up your lab and then in your lab notebook, I'd like you to sketch your final graph. And remember, sketch does not mean make a detailed picture of it showing every single data point and every single number. Sketch means we have our X and Y axes labeled. So like the X axis will be labeled width, CM. Y axis is height, CM. And then the numbers that you'll want to include is zero at the origin, and then to the x-axis, whatever you're going to, it would probably be 25 centimeters or 20 centimeters or something, and then same thing for your y-axis, and give a good general picture of your data. Again, you're not plotting each point in a sketch, that's what you used Desmos for. You're just drawing what the graph overall looks like, so you have a record of that in your lab notebook. If we were at school, we might print them out or actually be doing this like in a totally different way. So let's not even get into that. Um, anyway, so once you have your graph sketched, I'd like you to take a picture of each page, if it's more than one page or if it's just one page of this lab and upload it to this assignment here so that I can give you a little bit of feedback on how you're thinking about lab procedures, how you're setting up your data table, how you're thinking about measurement uncertainty is something I'm gonna pay close attention to because the next lab that we do, I'm actually going to be releasing you entirely to all the parts of it um, and having you write up kind of a, a lab report on how you are analyzing your data. And so this is your chance to get some feedback from me and it will take me a little bit of time to give you that feedback, but I want to have an opportunity to do so. So as usual, let me know if you have any questions, do your very best and good luck.